Wine presents Jan Murray, starring in Dollar a Second. Hi, folks. I'm Ken Roberts. Jan will be with you in just a moment. Right now, I'd like you to take a look at this fruitcake. Looks awfully good, doesn't it? You know, you can give your fruitcakes a wonderful old-fashioned flavor by moistening them with Mogan David wine. When the Mogan David wine soaks in, you will have the richest, best-tasting fruitcake you've ever eaten. And that's only one of the many delicious food recipes that you'll find in the big new Mogan David recipe book. It's the exciting new recipe book that you can have absolutely free. 42 pages of easy-to-prepare recipes that turn ordinary, everyday foods into mouth-watering treats. Most of them are inexpensive, too. Once you get a copy of the new Mogan David recipe book, you'll see how easy it is to have everybody rave about what a wonderful cook you are. Just send your name and address to Mogan David, Chicago 32, Illinois, and we'll send you a free Mogan David recipe book right away. That's all there is to it. Just send your name and address to Mogan David, Chicago 32, Illinois. This offer is good only in states where permitted. And now meet the star of Dollar a Second, Jan Murray. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, boy. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Bless your heart. Thank you. Good evening. And welcome once again to Dollar a Second. And now Morgan David Wine is ready to give someone a dollar a second. And our first contestant is our holdover contestant from last week, our housewife from Cobleskill, New York, Mrs. Frances McKay. Let's say hello to her. Frances? Hello, dear. How are you? Thank you, Pat. Well, welcome. Welcome once again to Dollar a Second. I think you were on about eight seconds last week, weren't you? Well, what was it? Eight seconds, Ken? Is that it? Exactly right, Eight Matt. seconds, that's right. You were on eight seconds, and we ran out of time, and you elected to come back, and we're going to start you off with eight dollars this week. Now you know the way we play the game. You get a dollar for every second you're up here. Quit us whenever you like. And the one way in which you could lose all the money you've accumulated is by our outside event. If our outside event should take place while you're still on the stage with me, Francis, you're going to lose all the money you've accumulated. And tonight, dear, is baby night once again on dollar a second. At this moment, our representative, Tom Reddy, is standing by in the waiting room at the maternity ward at the Manhattan General Hospital here in New York City. Now, we have a direct line to Tom, and the second the baby is born there, tonight, any baby at all, he's going to notify us immediately, and that is going to be your outside event. Easy enough to figure out? Huh? <laughs> let's see. Let's see if we're uh, through to Tom, all right. Kenneth, would you pick up the phone, please, right and on, check man. with Tom Reddy at the Manhattan General Hospital. Hello, Tom, are you there? Right here in the maternity ward, Ken. And so far today, there have been four babies born. As a matter of fact, one arrived shortly before we went on the air, so there's a lot of excitement around here. And as soon as the baby is born here during the next half hour, Night Supervisor Julia McGrath will notify us, and I'll let you know, and that'll be your outside event for tonight. Right you are, Tom. Thank you. Okay, Jan. All right. Now, you know, we're only on a half hour. It may be born the next minute, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. May not be a baby born during the next half hour, but if there is one... And you're on the stage, you're going to lose all the money you've accumulated. You're getting a dollar a second, and let's go. Is the Morgan David clock ready, Ken? Yes, Jan, already. It's set at eight seconds. Eight dollars, eight seconds. All right, we're starting you off with the eight dollars. With the sound of the cash register, you start making an additional dollar a second. Good. Francis, we're going to start you off with a little game that uh, I think you might find very interesting, Francis. Dear, would you just come over here and stand, stand over next to me? All right. Now, we're going to play a game called City or Country. And to help you play it, we have two very fine representatives from the city and the country. Would you send the city boy out first, please? There he is, man. <laughs> oh, man. What are you laughing at? <laughs> this is the suit that took the heart out of Shafter and Marks, I want you to know. Sit down, man. Crazy, crazy, man. Crazy, a little skinny. Crazy, man. Crazy. You've got to be crazy to walk around in a suit like that. All right. Now... Let's see our rugged farm boy. Here's our rugged farm boy. Right out here, sir. <laughs> this rugged or ragged farm boy? <laughs> Sit down. Farm farm boy. It looks like he's ready to be planted already. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to believe this lad is known as the Alley Khan of Eagle Rock. <laughs> All right, boy. 
Just take it easy, and I hope you live through the show, and we're going to go. Now, Francis, here's the idea. I'm going to read a list of words to you. If the word is usually associated with the city, such as the word subway, tap the city boy on the shoulder, and he'll blow the horn. See, he's got a little horn there. Just tap him, and he'll blow it, and he'll show you. Subway. Attaboy. That's what's going to happen, see? But if the word is usually associated with the country, such as the word barn, you tap the country boy like that, see? And he'll... That's what he'll do. That's right. That's right. That's right. But take it easy, you know. Don't, don't you know. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Are you sure you go to camp every summer? <laughs> every summer, huh? I want you to know this is the president of the Park Kettle Fan Club. Out there. <laughs> All right. Here we go now. Here we are. Skyscraper. <laughs> Penthouse. <laughs> don't kill him. Just shout him like that. You grab him by the throat. All right. All right. Rusty. Rural. Pastoral. Pastoral. All right. Pastoral. Past Bucolic. Bucolic. Urban. Ah, ah, ah. Urban should have said, this boy, we should have heard a horn. That's the city expression, Urban. Mate, would you please get up? Atta boy. Take your time. Take your time. The oxygen is right back there. All right. Well, you made your first mistake and you have to pay a penalty, Francis. And you know the way our penalties go. If you, make, if you pick the unlucky number the penalty, you're out of the game. You can't continue. But we'll still give you a dollar for every second you're up here providing a baby isn't born at the Manhattan General Hospital, okay? okay. Now, for your penalty, we're going to have your husband pay the penalty for you. Isn't that sweet of us? And before we meet your husband, tell me, is he afraid of height? No, not Your not husband isn't afraid of height? No. Gee, he's very fortunate. I'm scared to death. Aren't you? Aren't you frightened up there? I blacked out twice this week, changing the bulb in my bathroom, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, let's see the husband now. Let's see the husband. There he is. Doesn't he look cute? Come on over here and I'll show you what we're going to do now. Now, come right over here, Francis. Now, if you notice, he's standing, he's perched right up there on top of five boxes. They're numbered from one to five. One, two, three, four, five. And if you notice, out of each box, there's a wire, see? All we want you to do is select one of the boxes We'll take the wire. Our assistant here, Chris, will attach the wire to this dynamite plunger. Then when I tell you to go, you just set off the plunger, see? Now, four of the boxes have nothing in it, and your husband and you and everybody will be perfectly safe. See? But one of these boxes is filled with dynamite. <laughs> tell me, before you pick a box, has he been a good husband to you? Oh, a model husband. He's been a model husband? Model. Yeah. <laughs> well, you picked the wrong box. You'll have to trade them in for a new model. I'm... All right. Now, which box do you take? They're numbered from one to five. Which one? Three. Number three. All right, Chris. Would you take the wire out of number three? Just attach it to our dynamite plunger. Have you got it? Now, very careful. Don't worry about him, Francis. Now, don't let it go until I tell you. I'll say, ready, set, go. <laughs> How long has Francis been out here? 276 seconds, Jan. Well, Francis, you've been out here 276 seconds. You've got that much money, $276. What do you want to do? You want to continue? You want to quit? Don't forget, you're getting a dollar a second. But if a baby is born at the Manhattan General Hospital, it may happen any minute. may not happen for another hour or so. Who could tell? It's up to you. You want to continue? You want to okay. quit? You'll stay. Well, all right. Let's continue our game. Come on. Country and city, boy. Sit down. Fine. Didn't I see your picture on a bottle of iodine last week? It looks so familiar to me, I just can't place this book. All right, here we go now. All right, Silo. Granger. Granger. Doorman. Agrarian. One, two. Municipal. RFD. Avenue. Dale. Dale. Leah, Le Lou, 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 all right. <laughs> something in the country, anyway. <laughs> it's something that's out in the country. L.E.A., -E what is that, Leah? Sounds like my aunt's name. I don't know, all right. Here we go. Cosmopolitan. Swanky. Woodshed. Springhouse. Nightclub. Uh, husking bee. Apartment. Delicatessen. Parking ticket, tractor, barn, pasture. Hey, you did very good. All right, very fine. You went to the list, boys. You did beautiful. Very good.
Tell me, how long has Francis been up here now? Francis has been with you 387 seconds. Well, that money is piling up, Francis. You got $387. What do you want to do? You want to quit? You want to continue? Huh? You want to stay? All right, you can stay, but that baby might be coming any moment now at the minute. Uh-huh. Okay, keep your fingers crossed, huh? I'm going to read a list of famous nicknames, and you give me the real name, okay? Uh-huh. All right, on the stage. Abraham Lincoln. Right, nice and loud now. The Voice. Frank Sinatra. The Groner. Bing Crosby. Good, all blood and guts. General Patton. General Patton, that's very good. I thought it was Mr. Peepers. That's right, but it's... <laughs> Dizzy. Dean. The It Girl. Clara Bow. Two Ton. Tony. Tony the what? Lento, the Lento is right, the nose. Jimmy Durante. Satchel Mouth. Satchel Mouth. One, two, Satchimo. three. Mm-hmm. Satchmo. Yeah, well, who is it? Satchmo is good, but what? Satchmo what? Louis Armstrong. Come on, pick a little number here. All right, let's see if we dynamite your husband this time. Which one do you select? Five. Number five, Chris. Just take number five, wrap it up nice and carefully here. And you very carefully at the word go, just release that dynamite plunger. Ready, set, go! unlucky number in our penalty, but the outside event hasn't occurred and we're going to give you a dollar for every second you've been up here. Kenneth, how long has Mr. McKay been up here? 465 seconds. Oh man. boy, that's wonderful. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And how many correct, how many correct answers did she have? 34. Yes, she did. She was bright. We'll give her a dollar for each correct answer. That'll bring it to a grand total of $499. Wow! All the best and good luck, and that's one of 499. Ken, let's chip in a half a buck a piece. We'll make it 500. I'm game. Get the whole dollar then if you can. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, brother. You know something. I'm going to tell you something you're going to agree with in a moment. Isn't it funny that sometimes you'll go into a store and ask for a particular brand of toothpaste or maybe a certain kind of cleansing powder or some other product, and if the store happens to be out of it or if they don't carry the brand you ask for, well, naturally, they don't want to lose the sale, so they'll hand you some other brand and tell you it's just as good. Well, maybe, but generally, it isn't just as good because there must have been something pretty special about your favorite brand to make you ask for it in the first place, right? Now, it might happen sometimes, you could ask for Morgan David wine and find that your dealer is out of it. And rather than lose the sale, they'll try to sell you something else in its place. Well, folks, take it from me. When it comes to wine, there just isn't any substitute for genuine Morgan David wine. You might find cheaper wines, you might even find some that look a little like Morgan David wine. But there's just no other wine that tastes as good or is made according to the high quality standards of Morgan David. So don't let anybody fool you or mislead you. Don't take any second best. You want the wine with the most enjoyment, the most assurance of quality when you drink wine, and you're certainly entitled to it. So be sure to insist on the one and only Morgan David wine. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, you'll enjoy every glass full. And now it's time to meet our next contestant. So, Ken, who will it be? Well, we have two contestants for you now, Jan. Two door-to-door salesmen from New Jersey. They are Howard Baldorf and Andrew Erickson. Hiya. Hello, Andrew. Hello. How are you, Howard? Andrew and Howard. Uh, what parts of Jersey are you boys from? Where are you from, Howard? Fairlawn. Fairlawn. And you, sir? Clifton. Clifton. All right. Now, just stand close to you. What are you, buddies or relatives or something? Buddies. buddies. Or just buddies and you're teamed up together, right? Right. Okay, fine. We'll tell you in a moment why we dressed you like this. But first, you must know that you get a dollar for every second you're up here. Quit us whenever you like. Tonight's outside event is being, uh, is being, get a load of this, might be taking place at the Manhattan General Hospital. If a baby is born while you two boys are up here on the stage, you're going to lose all the money you've accumulated. Let's check with Tom Reddy and see what's been going on there. Would you please, Ken? Right, George, Ann. Tom, what's going on at the hospital? Don't answer. 
Well, uh, Ken, so far no storks have uh, passed through our waiting room, but uh, we'll be standing by and we'll let you know the moment a baby arrives for our outside event. Thank you, Tom. That's the story, Jan. All right, we're still waiting. Don't forget now, dollar a second, quit it whatever you like, and that baby is the outside of it. Is the Morgan David Clark ready? Yes, it's all ready, Jan. Good, at the sound of cash register, boys, you start making a dollar a second. Here we are. Would you bring this chair? Sir, would you sit down, Howard? You just sit down over here. No, we'll give Howard this little tinkle bell. And you, Andrew, you stand over here. See, now I'm going to explain this game to you. See? I'm going to read a list of animals. Some have legs and some haven't. If the animal I mentioned has no legs, then how would you remain seated right where you are and ring the bell? For instance, if I said cobra, a snake has no legs, so you'd ring the bell, right? Go ahead, just take a look. That's it, easy, fast, you know. Now, if the animal does have legs, then you, Andrew, you run all the way around the chair, around me, you know, don't knock me down, come around this way. Wait a minute, I think you'd better run around this way so you come back facing the audience, see? For instance, if I said fox terrier, fox terrier is a dog, Dog has legs, so he would run around the chair. Go ahead and try it. Here, come on, you're making a dollar a second. All right. Get a load of this. <laughs> more, boy, more. He ran like King Farouk with swim fins. You know, like King Farouk. Move it, come on, try it, Andrew. Come on, we got to work finish. A dollar a second. Welcome home, native dancer. All right. Here we go. Don't forget, now, if the animal has legs, you run around. If it doesn't have legs, you take a bell. One false move, you pay a penalty. Here we go. Pepper. <laughs> Buffalo. <laughs> Doberman. <laughs> you tired, Booby? <laughs> I mean, I thought maybe the bell is getting a little too heavy for you. <laughs> All right. Mare. <laughs> Whale. Oh, so you stole the thing down. That's good to know. Mullet. Moe. Moe. Oh, you, you look straight ahead. What are you telling him what to do? Look straight ahead. You just pay attention to the bell. All right. Mink. Eel. Seal. Teal. You all right? Teal. Clover. No! Clover's a bird, he should have read. Clover. You thought I said clover. <laughs> Take the chair away, this guy's gonna have a penalty. He thought I said clover. What's a clover? What kind of animal is a clover? <laughs> what are you, kidding? <laughs> clover? Look, at it. Look uh, Andrew, we want you to take a rest because you've been running pretty hard and we're gonna have your partner pay the penalty for you while you catch your breath, okay? Now, you know the way a penalty goes. Howard, if you pick the unlucky number in the penalty, you're out of the game, you can't continue, but we'll still give you a dollar for every second you've been up here with us. Now, let's open up and see the penalty, boys. Well, come with me, I'll explain it. Now, Howard, if you just stand here, see this little mark? Just stand here. Now, on your left, you notice we have five tire pumps. Now, at the end of each pump, there is a balloon of different sizes. All we want you to do is keep pumping air into the balloon until you break it. Now, while you're doing that, through our little compressed air tank over here, we'll be filling this big balloon over your head, which is filled with ice cold water. Now you're gonna be racing against that big balloon. You gotta break your little balloon before that big balloon breaks. Now four of these tire pumps has a balloon on the end of it that I'm sure you'll be able to break before we break that big one. But if you pick the wrong one, you're gonna lose. Because you see the wrong one, no balloon, it's a dirigible you'll be blowing up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay? Now, which one do you select? They're numbered from one to five, one, two, three, four, five. Which one? Uh, two. Number two, just get back on your mark, I'll hand it to you. Number two, right here. Just put your feet on it. Put that balloon out. Put your feet on it. And go! Now beat that balloon, go! Seconds, Jack. Well, fellas, you got $246. What do you want to do? You want to continue? You want to quit? You're getting a dollar a second, but don't forget if a baby's born at Manhattan General Hospital and you're still on the stage, you're going to lose all the money to accumulate. What do you want to do? Go ahead. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Some more, huh? Let's have the chair. It's time for that boy to run again. Oh, we're going to make you silk white. Here we go. Don't forget, the animal has legs. You run, you do nothing. No legs, you take the bell and you stand still. Here we go. Ready? All right. Anchovy. Caviar. Harry. 
Who made this list out? I'm getting thirsty. Yeah? <laughs> Salmon. Uh, salamander. Come on, move it. Chameleon. Marmoset. What are you looking at each other? What are you having a meeting here? Let's we'll, we'll just look out into the camera. Let them not have a meeting. Here. All right. Platypus. Octopus. Yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? Run right over there and take a rest. Right over there and take a rest. Octopus has no legs. You did just a lot of arms. Kid. Follow me and pick one. Which one do you choose now? Which one do you choose? Hurry up, Harlow. Uh, we five. got one, three, four, five. All right, number five. Get in your position. Right over here. Step up. Hey, incidentally, don't let the size of these balloons fool you. You know, some of these small ones take an hour to blow up. Some of the big ones go in a second. Go! Three seconds, All Jan. That money is piling up. You got three hundred seventy-three dollars. What do you want to do now? Want to quit? Getting a dollar a second, but don't forget that baby may be born any second. What do you want to do? Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. What do you want? You want me to leave and you take over, or you want to continue? Bring out the chair. Come on. It's time for Pavel Nurmi here to run around the chair a little bit. All right. Here we go. We're ready. Walrus. Walrus. Yeah, uh, run straight out there. Straight out. Come with me and pick one. Whoa, you should have made it to bed. Come with me. All right. Howard, which one do you choose? We have one, three, and four left. Which one do you choose? Four. Four. Get over in your position. Get over in your position. Hold on. Don't worry about that. You can see it. Work hard. Hurry up. number not penalty <laughs> but a baby hasn't been born as yet so you can't continue with us but we're going to give you a dollar for every second you've been up there Kenneth how long have the boys been up there 511 seconds oh man. boy wait a minute and how many correct answers did that have 519 519 no. correct answers <laughs> Nine, I'm too excited 19 19 <laughs> well <laughs> Four cents for each correct answer. That's not big. <laughs> Let's give him a dollar for each correct answer. That brings it to a grand total of five hundred and thirty dollars. Smoke David Wine is back with you, boys. Five hundred thirty dollars. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. 
thing is just getting too exciting for me, this show, I swear. Oh, boy, I'm sure glad they want some money. They're real nice fellows. And Kenneth, who's our next contestant, please? Well, before we meet our next contestant, Jan, I'd like to talk to the folks for a minute. You know, during the last few weeks, a lot of you people were introduced to Morgan David Wine for the very first time. And uh, since you first tried Morgan David during the holiday season, maybe at a party, or maybe because you received a bottle of Morgan David wine as a gift, well, you might think that Morgan David is primarily a holiday wine. Well, it's true, of course, that Morgan David wine is always a treat, but you'll be very glad to know that you don't have to wait for any special occasion to enjoy Morgan David wine. You see, Morgan David is so inexpensive, you can enjoy it every day of the year for no reason at all, except that it just tastes so good. Lots of folks keep Morgan David wine in their refrigerators so that it's handy to use whenever they happen to feel like it. So, whether you've tried Morgan David for the very first time or whether you've been enjoying it for many years, here's a little suggestion on one way to help make the new year more pleasant. Keep a couple of decanters of Morgan David wine in your refrigerator and enjoy it often. Now, Jan, we're ready with your next contestant. He is a dentist from Yonkers, New York, Dr. Milton Eskey. Well, hello, how are you, Doc? Thank you, Pat. Welcome, Doctor. Dr. Eskey from Yonkers, New yes. York. Did he, can't say you're a dentist? Yes, sir. All right, lots of luck to you, Doc. I think we're gonna run out of time pretty soon. We want you to make a few bucks. Oh, I got luck. You know the game? Dollar a second? Yes. Quit. <laughs> Someone stole your eye bread, I see. <laughs> Dollar a second, quit us whenever you like. The outside event is a baby being bought at the Manhattan General Hospital. If that should occur while you're up, you're going to lose all the money to accumulate it. Is the Morgan David clock ready? It's all ready once again. Good. At the sound of the cash register, Doc, you start making a dollar a second. Okay. Fine. We're going to play a cute little game. Just face me now. Don't look around. See? Now, we're going to play a little game called I Get Up in the Morning. See, for example, what do you do when you first get up in the morning? I open my eyes. Lots of luck to you. I'm glad. Well, all right. That's a good way to start the day. Now, now you say, I get up in the morning and open my eyes. I say, I get up in the morning, I open my eyes, and I have some breakfast, see? Then you say, I get up in the morning, open my eyes, I have some breakfast, then I go out to work. Well, whatever you do, you understand what I mean? We've got to keep adding on to each other's story, and let's see if you can remember 10 things you do after you get up in the morning, okay? Sure. I'll start. I get up in the morning and I pull the string of my... Happy New Year. <laughs> Well, Doc, that's it, that's it. You know what that buzzer means. I'm getting used to it now. We've just run out of time, and let's see how long you've been up here. Ken, how long has Dr. Esky been up here? Well, he's been with us for 42 seconds, Jan. 42 seconds. Well, Doc, you got yourself $42 at a dollar a second, you know. You can quit us right now, take the $42, or you can come back next week and be our very first contestant, and we'll start you off at $42. What would you like to do? I'd like to come back. You'd like to come back sure. next week? Good luck to you, okay. Doc. We'll see you next week. Take care of yourself. And, uh, We'll start next week with Dr. Esky. We'll start him off at 40. Do it now. Right, Jeff? Right, George, huh? man. Say, have we got can somebody? Can somebody tell me fast that we got time to check with the Manhattan General Hospital, although I know nothing has happened there. Have we got any time to check fast? No. We're, we're, we're real, well, I guess not. We know nothing has happened at the Manhattan General Hospital yet. Whatever daddies are there waiting, good luck to you. God bless you. Hope you have healthy, happy babies. To you, ladies and gentlemen, good night now. We'll see you. Dollar Second is presented by Morgan David Wine, produced and bottled by the Morgan David Wine Corporation, Chicago City, Illinois. Dollar Second, started January, was directed by Martin Nagman, and was directed by Leonard. Produced by David Brown. Tune in again next week for Dollar Second. It's new, Pantomime Quiz, Sunday night on ABC Television Network.